If you have seen my last video, you remember that I received a faulty Tintoretto brush. But don't worry, there is a happy end to this story. I got instead the Borciani e Bonazzi brush and returned the Tintoretto one. The store will send it back to the manufacturer for revision. But I had time to compare it to the brushes that I own. So, welcome to the video where I compare all my watercolor brushes. I mostly have quills. I like the aesthetics, but also it seems more sturdy. The ferrules, often with the time passing, get flimsy. Maybe it happened to my brushes, cause they were not high-end. From the university times, I still have two squirrel brushes that probably don't have a long time left with me. All the other brushes I ever owned vanished in the annals of history. So, now I have two brushes from the Unico Infinito series, and I want to start with them. They are the newest addition to my family of brushes, and I have already fallen in love with them. I'm not a professional brushes reviewer, but I did my best to try to show you how they perform. I wanted to see how much water the brush can absorb and hold, how springy it is, how well it can keep a sharp point, if even have one designed. Stay till the end of the video to see some mark making. I will fill a page with brush strokes in my sketchbook. I myself am not against the brushes made with natural hairs, but I actually can't afford them, so I'm very happy that companies come up with synthetic alternatives. I don't know what is best for environment. I don't think any brushes are made with recycled plastic, but I will be one of the first ones to buy one like this if any company comes up with a way of producing a good brush and not introducing more plastic to the planet. Both Borciani and Bonazzi mop brushes absorb a good amount of liquid. It's something people look for in wash brushes. These brushes are said to imitate squirrel hair. The bristles are soft, but not as soft as natural ones for sure. It's a plus for me, because these brushes can make fine lines with their sharp points. I find them quite versatile. If you want one of them, pay attention to the size and look for the measurements. Wash brushes are not the same as round brushes. You might think you are getting a number 8 to paint in a sketchbook, but instead receiving a huge brush that is better used on an A3 sheet. Don't get bigger than 2 if you plan on using it in a sketchbook. Here is our culprit, the Tintoretto 1407 in size 6. Let's thank this brush for initiating this video. Now I don't have it anymore, but I'm glad I had a chance to feel it. I'm definitely open to getting the same brush, but only in a physical store, where I can get a good look on its construction. Of course, I won't be able to know if the brush has a sharp point. This will only be seen after washing away the binder that keeps the bristles glued together. This brush also is a squirrel imitation. The bristles are softer than the ones of Unico Infinito and seem to hold better the liquid. However, Borciani e Bonazzi wins in being springy and keeping better the point. As for design, it's all personal taste. From one point of view, the brutal look of Unico Infinito intrigues me, but the classic and refined look of Tintoretto is closer to my heart. It is an elegant brush that sits comfortable in hand. What does Tintoretto tell us about this brush? Traditional brush with a redefined design for the modern age. It possesses the most advanced features under every aspect. Realized with the collaboration and precious technical support of the professional watercolorist and illustrator Felice Feltracco. These brushes are conceived especially to satisfy the extreme needs of modern watercolorists. Remarkably thin tip, high color retention, appreciable elasticity for the return of the tip. Unlike traditional squirrel hair brushes in natural quill, series 1407 is 100% cruelty free, since the ferrule is made out of plastic material and the fibers are completely synthetic. Moreover, the handle is realized with a special varnishing which enters the wood, making it waterproof, estranging it from the typical breaking and cracking of the surface, also anti-slip for more grip on the handle in order to guarantee maximum precision. Now let's visit Borciani e Bonazzi website and see what they have to say about Unico Infinito brush. Extraordinary softness and absorption of the hydrofiber, 
slow and smooth water release, the tip follows the changing pressure of the brush stroke while maintaining white color autonomy. The black resin handle with a high-tech anti-slip texture. Designed to favor the brush grip by reducing tensions in the hand joints. It has an ergonomic and anti-rolling system. Round technical tip. I realized that they wrote a whole essay on this brush, so I will just insert the screenshot of the text. It's really comfortable that one side of the holder is flat, so the brush can be stable on the table. An interesting observation that I made is how differently located are the balancing points of these brushes. Here I try to show it to you by keeping them steady on my finger. The next brush is an oldie. The Sunnet brush is at least 10 years old. She was well loved in my university years when I painted on big formats. And now she just stays in a brush holder to remind me of these days. It's a squirrel brush, so it's super soft and absorbs lots of liquid. The brush doesn't keep its shape and needs to be reshaped after heavy strokes. In this shot you can notice how differently natural hairs behave. When immersed in water, the hairs fan out because they are so light and soft. When you get the brush out of the jar, a lot of water gets trapped in between the bristles. The swelling of the head of the brush in this shot is another proof of how squirrel hairs absorb a great amount of water. After so many years the brush is still looking good, even if I forgot her many times in jars. I got better with this and never fully immersed my brushes and never let them in water. I have a bunch of brushes from Art Secret that I got last year when I decided to get back to art. Some of them are good and some are just okay. I have seen different reviews on them. Some people hate them and some worship them for their quality to price ratio. This is 40RT brush with Taclon bristles. Even if it is a synthetic brush, it's softer than the ones for acrylic paint. The brush is very useful if you did not pre-wet the pens and your watercolors are on a dry side. Save your precious sable brushes and don't dig the watercolor out of pens with them. You might have noticed how well it absorbs water. This brush is good when you need to lift paint from a sheet. It's not like an eradicator for small details, but does well for backgrounds. 15RT is another brush made of Taclon bristles. I have it in another size, so I can't really compare it to the 40RT. However, it seems it has a different shape of the head and I like it better. I also use it more often, because this size is perfect for an A5 sketchbook. Even for A4 it should work well. The bristles feel less stiff, but maybe it's just my imagination. The plastic ferrule got stained after the first use, so if you get the brush and you care for its look, pay attention. I should have taken some photos of the brush in mint condition, but I didn't. You can check photos on AliExpress where I got all the art secret brushes from. 45RSQ is a mix of sable and synthetic hairs. It's very similar to the previous brush. Same stained ferrule after the first use, same design of the handle, but the belly of the head is larger and bristles are softer. It keeps well its shape when wet. This one is my favorite among the Art Secret brushes in my collection. I hope the quality will be stable with years passing and I can order again this brush from AliExpress. But it happens often that Chinese products are manufactured with less attention when the brand is more popular and the products have a lot of positive reviews. And here is my second favorite brush, the 24RQ. It's a mix of black squirrel hairs and synthetic ones. I should definitely get it in a bigger size. But the handle drives me crazy. It's untreated wood and looks so messy after a painting session. However, with this one Art Secret did better by choosing a black plastic ferrule so we don't see the stains. I wish they use a varnished handle in this brush. I decided to check the Art Secret online store and saw that they did come up with a new version of this brush in black wood with silver wires. It's a wonderful upgrade. 
Da Vinci Casaneo brushes were in my wish list for a long time after I saw Parka Blogs review them. How does Da Vinci describe this brush? Wash brush that is made from extra soft synthetic fibers with an extraordinary elasticity and extremely high color absorbing capacity. It is manufactured in plastic quills bound on black lacquered handles. I got the smallest 498 brush because even if it is not natural hairs, it still gets more pricey with increasing the size. Another reason why I got number zero is that the fibers are very springy and it allows to use it for detail work without redeeping it in paint after every stroke. Before I was mostly using a shooting brush that I am showing you now. It came in a big set, but this number 12 has a particularly sharp point and can hold some paint. Also useful for dry brush technique or for lifting. Nylon bristles don't have a great capacity of holding liquid and can't compete with imitation of squirrel or sable. This art comb brush is another old squirrel brush. It was a low budget brush and it never had a sharp point. The ferrule got flimsy very fast and I definitely was not taking good care of the brush. I don't know if they are still produced and sold. In any case, I think you can get them only in Russia, but unless you are a student in an art school and your teacher demands a squirrel brush for watercolor, I would recommend to get something else instead. The next brush is another brush by Borciani e Bonazzi in the Unico series. Mangusta paint brushes are made of soft synthetic fibers that imitate mongoose hair. The brushes in this series are very affordable and they also feature the particular handle that prevents brush to roll from the table. Very useful feature I need to say. Another brush by Art Secret, a squirrel brush with a long handle, not really comfortable in use, it mostly sits in my brush holder honestly. Size 6 in this series is quite small. I guess it's considered a round brush and the previously shown brushes by Art Secret were wash brushes. The bristles of this brush are pretty soft. The last brush and it's also by Art Secret. I use this one every time I go on a plein air. It fits perfectly a 12 half pence tin box. The 881 brushes feature a mix of sable and synthetic bristles. Don't expect it to perform like a deluxe sable brush, so it won't dilute you. The pocket brushes are usually expensive, especially the ones made of natural sable hair. This imitation is not a bad one for its price, I can't complain, but I won't be buying it again. I might be getting one day a pocket brush from the 700 series by Borciani e Bonazzi, they are very pretty, I think they also perform well. I will show you now all the brushes in action in the same order I presented them to you.
I thought of adding some close-ups. Not sure how else to let you feel the softness or the elasticity of the bristles. Feel free to let me know if you have any questions regarding the brushes I use. Have you tried any of these brushes? I'm sure many people got art secret brushes because they are affordable. I guess Borciani and Bonazzi are less popular worldwide, but they sure are well known in Italy. I'm sorry I couldn't show you the greatest brushes from big brands like Isabey, Raphael, Escoda, Rosemary & Co, Princeton or Silver Brush. I hope one day I will be able to upgrade to them and share this happiness with you. What is your favorite brush? Which one is a real must and worth the splurge? Do you prefer synthetic brushes or natural hairs? Do you use classic round brushes with ferrules? Or do you, like me, prefer French quill brushes? Do you have pocket brushes to travel with? Or maybe you got a sturdy holder to protect your brushes in the bag? Please write in the comments, I'll be happy to read them. After filming this review, I kinda feel like doing a painting using all of these brushes. Well, except for Tintoretto that I have already returned. What do you think of it? Would you watch a video of me filling a large sheet of paper with flowers, leaves and berries? I think it's a suitable subject for brushes competition. Thank you for watching this video. Especially a big thanks if you watched till the end. I really appreciate it. It took me a long time to do it. I had to redo it three times, because often things were getting out of focus for a long time or the filming angle was not working for me. Anyway, I hope it's not the worst review of the brushes you have ever seen. If it is, then I'm open for suggestions. Let me know, how can I improve?